Wow Play. Lo puedes ver. Welcome to Wow Speaks English. A radio program made by students for the world. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Wow Speaks English. My name is Diana Toro, your host. And today I have next to me the beautiful Mariana Franco. Hello, Mari. Hi, everyone. So to my left, I have Sebastián Giraldo. Hello, guys. How are you? All right, everyone. So we want to say hello to everyone, especially who, Sebastián? We want to say hi to the audience watching us live. How is this week going? What is your name and where are you listening from? Also, and while you write in the comments, we want to invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well as Speaks English. There you will find weekly fun facts, uh, videos and info regarding our next programs. Okay, so... Sebas, okay. tell us about uh, if you would like to be a guest in the program. Um, if you want to be part of the program, even, uh, you know, being here conducting, you can uh, search for Wow Speaks English at Instagram and you can contact with us and yeah, we can be part of the team. And also, if you want to be a guest in our program, You can contact us. Remember our social media that Mariana just mentioned. Wow well, Speaks English on Instagram and Facebook. Tell us, why would you like to join? What would you um, contribute to the program, to the team? The idea of this program is for you to, first of all, speak English, practice English. What else can we do in the program, Mari? Learn a lot. Learn new stuff about everything. Learn things like what, Sebas? Um, yeah, about content creation. I like that. Content, content creation. Content creation. Uh, you need to speak with a lot of people, actually. You can create context. That's pretty important for life. And, you know, you can share your your uh, experience with us. And, uh, yeah, you can know a lot of people, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And also, based on what you study, you can definitely apply the knowledge that you have. Mariana is a social communicator. So what of those skills that you have acquired as a social communicator do you think you're practicing right now? Um, pretty much everything. Because, <laughs> you know, I have to, to talk and be like familiar with this, being also comfortable with this, and recording, doing the interviews. So a lot of things. Okay. Most of all. So presenting. Yeah. Interviewing, editing videos, recording the videos. Yeah. Uh, also creating interview questions. Writing the scripts. Also. Writing the script. All this yeah. journalistic. Yes. Job that you're doing within the program. It, did you have an opportunity? Even investigation. To do, even even researching, researching the topic. Yeah. Exactly. Good. And for Sebastian, you are a multimedia engineer. Yeah. What of your knowledge have you applied so far to the program? Actually, right now, uh, as a multimedia engineer, oh my God, uh, nothing related. Actually, I, I was <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I some, uh, I have some ideas about photography and video making, like filmmaking and editing, editing videos. But right now, that's not my, like, uh, something that I just uh, add to the program. But yeah, I, I'm ready to to support that. Uh, right now, I was uh, taking some interviews too. That was uh, so amazing. Yeah, we we knew a lot of people so uh, committed and so uh, warm. They help they help us just like like that. And and yeah, actually, I, I, I'm applied like uh, more. Things like a presentation, journalism, interviewing, uh, researching, that actually that things I like it too. Okay. And as a multimedia engineer, you have just started. I yeah. think we have been in, in this process a month. Um, yeah, like three weeks actually. Three um, weeks. Three weeks old here. On... Exactly. You're a newborn baby. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm right here. That's shocking and amazing actually. Cool. What do you think you could integrate? or proposed into our project from the multimedia engineering point of view? 
from the multimedia engineer point of view, okay, uh, I like a lot of interaction. So I, I like a lot of the interaction. I like a lot like uh, uh, video games, but um, probably from the my multimedia, um, something related with the edit, the videos editing and uh, the content creation and some uh, kind of things related with, um, you know, uh, taking the picture because I, I like that. And uh, yeah, more like uh, something related with, with the interaction between the comments and, uh, and the show right now. Yeah, something like that. I actually right now I'm thinking about that, but um, right now I'm kind of blank. So yeah, give me a little bit more time. Okay. <laughs> So we want to say hi to everyone watching us. Some of you have sent us your comments telling us where you're connected from. So I want to read some of the comments that at the beginning someone made. Uh, this comment is if uh, you guys back there can find it. Sebastian Eduardo Delgado. He says, hi, I'm Sebastián Delgado, group nine. I see you from my house. So hello, Sebastián, from your house. And also Jacqueline Trujillo. And everyone else is saying hi. Uh, over here, we have Jacobo Leal saying, the teacher is the best. Thank you, Jacobo. <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> compliment. <laughs> and everyone else saying hi. Uh, Daniela Cano, she says she's a student from WOW, and Jan Giraldo from HOME. So thank you everyone for connecting. Today we're going to be talking about exchange students and exchange programs and cultural shock. This is our second part of the program. If you connected two weeks ago, we had the first part with some guests and it was so nice and yeah. we had so much to talk that we didn't finish. Yeah. So we decided to give you a little bit more, a second part of this juicy program that we planned for you, where you are gonna get more details. Later on, the guests are going to be joining us, but for now, we want to go into the first section, that is the tip talk. Many things happen every day at the U. Let's discuss them at Tip talk. <clears throat> okay, everyone, welcome back. And this is the tip talk section. In here, we give you facts and information that we have researched regarding a specific topic. Today, we're talking about exchange programs and living abroad. So the question of the day for you is, have you ever considered an exchange program? What I mean is, have you ever considered living abroad, uh, going to another country? Uh, and it, it, is, it depends on the kind of exchange program that you like. I want to ask this question while you answer in the comments. Have you ever considered an exchange program? Yes, no, why? And where would you like to go? I want to start by asking Mariana, have you ever done an exchange program, anything related to that? No, I've never done an exchange program or anything like that, but I definitely would want to. Okay, if That's you could. That's one of my plans. <laughs> if you could, what kind of exchange program would you do? It would be more like um, for education and also using the language. I love speaking English and I would like to live like the real experience of, you know, and knowing people and everything that an exchange program has. So it could be like a teacher volunteer kind of a thing. Yeah. Also, I like those, the volunteer ones. I think they are really nice and you can learn a lot of things from there. Okay. Uh, do you have any specific country where you would like to go to? Mm, I don't know, maybe um, England or something like that. Okay. All right. And um, the question again for everyone, have you ever considered living abroad and Yes, where? Where would you like to go? And what kind of exchange program would you be looking to get into? Later on, we're going to give you more details on all the exchange programs that the university offers and the opportunities that are available for you right now. Now, I want to talk to Sebastian. Have yeah. you ever considered living abroad? Yeah, sure. Actually, that's one of my dreams, actually. Yeah. Try to live in in another country with different cultures. 
So, okay. Yeah. And where where would you like to go? Mm, I like, uh, yeah, like Norway, Germany, that uh, freeze countries. So, yeah, because I like... European uh, countries. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, freezing. I mean, I love iced <laughs> you weather. Do, well, Canada <laughs> would be perfect for you. Yeah, Canada is a good option, but, you know, I, I want to explore uh, the cultures of uh, aging Europe. I mean, yeah, age okay. Europe. So that's why I prefer that countries over Canada. Okay. Awesome. And we have different kinds of exchange programs. It, we have cultural ones where you just go for a few months to know the city, to learn the culture, maybe to stay with a host family. Yeah, that, yeah. that's cool, actually. I, I mean, that's the that's one of the best ways to know a different culture and is living with a family from there. Also changing like your mind of what you think of the world. Yeah. It opens totally your mind when you go to other countries, you met people. It's totally mind changing. Cool. The other kind of exchange program could be one that you could do where you study in a university abroad. So the same semester that you were supposed to study here, you could take it in a similar program in some university that is allied to the WOW. Would you guys be willing to do that? Would it be nerve wracking or would you guys be up for it? I'll be apt for it 100%. Okay, I think that something that would be a requirement for that one would be a good English level because you're going to yeah. be seeing all the classes in English. I mean, turning in homework and projects, talking to partners, to teachers. Would that be too? Yeah, that, that, that sounds a little bit shocking, actually. But yeah, that's the opportunity. That's the adventure. So why not take it, you know? So yeah, I mean... Uh, Difficult, but nice. So challenging, challenging but, but yeah. doable. Yeah, yeah. It's totally. completely uh, affordable. So yeah, let's go for it, actually. Yeah. Take the adventure, go for it. Uh, straightforward. Okay. And if your level of English is not the highest one right now, remember that there's always room for improvement. So another kind of exchange program is a language exchange program where you travel just for learning and improving the language. It could be English or it could be the language that you choose. But of course, the idea would be that you improve and have a very high level of English. And after you do that, you start with other languages and you will see that they will become easier to learn. If you could do an exchange program, where would you go? Mm, I don't know, maybe also Europe. I love mm, like seeing the cultural things they have, the, everything. Landmarks. Landmarks. History, like that. museums. History. Yeah. Okay. The nice thing about going to a very plurilingual area like Europe is that you're going to hear different accents, not just because you have a, an American accent or a British accent. It means that you, I mean, that's, that's the best English. English is the one that everyone can understand and that you can understand everyone with their different accents. It doesn't matter where they're from. So the idea could be to go to a country where you're going to be um, challenged. So not to use your native language, but that maybe you're with people from around the world, from China, from Korea, from France, from Germany, but the only language that unites all of them is English. And what about you? If you were to do an, a language exchange program, where would you go? Mm, language exchange program. Actually, I know or I have the knowledge or something like that, that there is like a program when, where you go and learn the, the the language but teach spanish too i oh. mean so that's a, a for me that's a a, a good uh, exchange you could be that would be a double exchange yeah because i i will be able to uh teach my native language i, I love spanish actually <laughs> i love english and i like to speak english uh but but spanish for me is is so beautiful i mean the spanish is is, is um language about love, you know, but... A romance language. Yeah, actually a romance language. Uh, 
So I love Spanish. So that would be nice. Like uh, teach my 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 Spanish, the native Spanish, and learn like uh, you know not only English but um, Germany, uh, German, German, um, you know, mm, French, Japanese could oh be too. Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah, something crazy but nice. Okay, yeah. guys, did you know that teaching is the best way of learning? So when you teach, you have to really understand to teach someone, to explain, to, to know why. Because many people say, but why? Why is it said like that? Why is this grammar like this? Why is this word like that? And you cannot say just because. Right. You really have to do your homework and understand <laughs> first before teaching. So that's why teachers and teaching is such a grateful and satisfactory experience. Because it's a process that you do not only with the other person, but with yourself. We have a lot of comments. Our chat is booming right now. So we want to go to the comments right now with over there in the booth, Juanca, Valentina, and teacher Manuel. They're there checking your comments and selecting them and making sure that they're going to be shown live. So thank you very much for this. And we have the first comment. Mari, who is participating there right now? What did he say? Okay, Juan David Ortega on Salamanca said, Yes, Canada would be a good option to visit and an opportunity to improve my English. Just make sure, Juan David, that you like cold weather. <laughs> yeah. Most year is cold, but you know, Sebastian loves cold yeah. weather. Yeah, n not just cold weather. I mean, freezing. Yeah, yeah. but you know? have you ever been to no. a place? I have been, no. I have been, and I like the experience. How did you manage? There. It was, uh, I mean, I was, it was like three, uh, three degrees down zero. Under, below, under below, zero, below. below zero. Okay. And I don't know, I just think it's better than extremely hot. Okay. Because extreme hot gave me like, you know, headaches, things like that. I don't like it. But I have, I have been in places where it's extremely cold. And I, like, I can afford it better. As long as you have the proper clothes, obviously. <laughs> I think that it yeah, could be manageable. Um, actually, yeah. uh, actually, uh, like, uh, cold fashion is better. For me, yeah, it's better. It's, yeah, it's that, so nice. That's not a, that's not a, I mean, that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. Cold, so, uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> talking about our guests. They just arrived. They're yeah. gonna settle down. They're gonna put their things out and they're going to join us so that we can continue interviewing them and they continue telling us about their experience. So maybe uh, Gillian and Isabella, okay? Yeah, you can come right here. And then uh, Jordan could be here on the on the corner and Jayesh could be over here. Put your headphones on. Thank you so much. While you get ready, we want to continue reading some questions. Uh, Sebas, what else do we have over there? Julian David has some answers for us. Um, Julian David, Murcia Marin says, Yes, I would like to go to, uh, to go live in New Zealand, Australia, or Switzerland. Yeah, that's good, actually. Beautiful country. Wow. Australia is nice. Very nice. And definitely, you're going to have a good language experience there because... I mean, you're not going to see a lot of people speaking Spanish, not everywhere. Also, Jose Daniel Osorio says, the cold does not matter. It is an option um, of giant growth. Yes. So, Jose Daniel, that's the attitude. Very good. And one last comment. What else do we have? Comments. Okay, there we go. Rocio Bolaño says, of course, I would like to know other places, other cultures and languages. Thank you, Rocio. And thank you, everyone. Later on, we're going to continue reading your comments. One more from Juan Esteban. Yes, I would really like to live an experience in Spain, learning more about my program. Very nice, Juan Esteban. So, guys, here with us are Yeish. Hello, Yeish. We have um, Gillian. Hi. Isabella. Hi. And Jordan. Hello, hello. How's it going, guys? Pretty good. How's the, how's the bipolar weather treating you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have to say I'm happy. It's now sunny. I didn't really like it when it was uh, rainy and 
things like that. It so. reminded you of your hometown? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, put your microphone a little bit closer. And we have been talking to people and asking them about exchange programs and living abroad. We're asking them where would you where, where would they go if they could have an exchange program? So we want to ask you. You selected the beautiful Kali mm -hmm. for your exchange experience. We want to ask you why did you decide? How did you find out about our city? Let's start on the left with Yesh. Um, what should I start with first? Why did you select the city? Um, I more so selected the program because my program had a focus on talking about like race in Colombia. So I really wanted to come to the program and it just happened to be in Cali. But I am really glad that I came. Okay. And to give the people that did not watch the first part context, we had an um, exchange program part one two weeks ago. And we invited these beautiful people down here because they have been uh, staying in Cali for about two months now. Around two months, yes. Two months. They come from the United States, and they're here in an academic exchange program. It, they're going to be here until May or June. June so 10th. June, until June 10th. You already have it marked in your calendar. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. I wish I could stay here forever. Nice. <laughs> you could. We can find a way. Let's find a way. <laughs> a nice girl. <laughs> and... Uh, they have been talking about their experience. They already did some food tasting. And today we're going to go with part two, talking about their cultural shock experience. Okay, so yes, you said mostly because of the um, race, history, and studies that you have encountered here. Mm -hmm. All right. And Jillian, why did you select Colombia and Cali especially? Um, <coughs> my family's from Palmira. So I, I really wanted to learn more about just the area they grew up in the the culture itself and like just look into more about like as you said like the racial and ethnic dynamics of the region um which i think is really interesting um and isn't really talked about much in the united states so okay thanks so much isabella what about you um yeah pretty similar to jillian actually my mom is from bucaramanga but came to the states when she was pretty young and so i really wanted to come to colombia to kind of experience um what she could have grown up with if she hadn't left and then also because i didn't learn spanish at home um, i was about to ask you that <laughs> if you spoke yeah. spanish Yeah, so she speaks Spanish, but never taught me. And so now I'm kind of learning um, at school and for myself here. So it's been really great. Is she super thrilled that you're back and you're in this process of learning your your supposedly native language? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think at first she was pretty nervous. Um, and it's still kind of more of a complex conversation because, you know, I'm having experiences that are really different to what she had. Um, and we're taking time to, like, relate over those and but yeah she's over the moon that i am learning spanish cool over the moon that is an expression that you should learn <laughs> let's go with jordan um for me i chose colombia uh first i wanted to be in a country where i'm going to learn spanish um i didn't want to go to europe because europe is I, i feel like it's a little bit more eurocentric um and i wanted to be you know in a place where it's uh, very Latin, you know, Latin America. I have friends from Mexico and Dominican Republic, so, and I feel like in, in history, I never really learned a lot about Latin America. Um, and once I learned, uh, Cali was the capital of salsa. <laughs> and, uh, that, that got you. That, that got me, you know, I, I like to learn and dance and I like to try a lot of different things. So I said, you know what, uh, Cali's, that's it. That's where I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. Well, we are going to start asking our audience to give you some recommendations. Because since most things are new for you, food, places, transportation, um, we want Gustavo to play the first slide with the question. And we have a question for you. Or we're going to ask you to recommend dishes to our visitors. Recommend the dishes that you think that they should eat. They have already eaten morcilla. They already mm -hmm. had it. 
they already had chontaduro, mazamorra. Mm -hmm. What other dishes do you rec do you remember that you have already eaten? Oof. <laughs> Arepa de choclo. Arepa de choclo, she already did. Mm -hmm. um, Sancocho. Okay. The best mm -hmm. one. <laughs> the yeah. grass and grass yeah, soup. Yeah, the grass soup. <laughs> where's, my, where's my phone? I have a, a list going on of uh, foods that I have tried. You did. Yes. Also, shout out to one of my friends, Laura, and her family, because uh, last Friday, her mom invited me over, and I had like a lot of Colombian foods that I haven't tried yet. So the thing about me is I'm really bad with my memory, especially like remembering things in Spanish, but I've tried like, oh, it, it. That's why you have the list. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly why I have the list. So uh, Mari and Sebas, we're asking them to recommend dishes, but what other recommendations we could ask the audience to make to our guest, Mari? Maybe places to visit here, like places you need to visit in Cali. Okay, places you need to visit in Cali, please make these recommendations and say us what else can they recommend? That's, uh, I mean, over uh, places and food, it's um, probably different cities near here to Cali because, you know, there is a, uh, little towns that are so beautiful, like uh, Buga, like, uh, you know, Tuluá, they, they are, uh, there are, they are, yeah, actually a lot of places too but they are little towns and you know the the movement in the town and the city is so different so you can uh, check that too go um sightseeing yeah a little road trip yeah. around Valle del Cauca mm -hmm. that's true could be it so people are starting to recommend things. We're going to read them later on. Uh, Sofia Trujillo says you should try Lulada. Have you mm. already done that? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, we all, we, that was like one of the first things that we all tried when we got <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And from 1 to 10? Um, I really like it. So like a 10 for me. But mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know about everybody else. Did you have it with the condensed milk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, yes. that's like the, the cherry on the cake. <laughs> because without that, it's just a juice. Really? Right. <laughs> with the condensed milk, that's what makes it special. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Love cholado. That. Did you guys already try that? Yes. Yes. Cholado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the fruit or just with the with the ice? Both. With Yeah. <laughs> but I like the one with the fruit better, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the actually, it's so different. But the ice is refreshing so nice. <laughs> they actually they actually sell cholado in the united states yeah really oh, yeah. really oh, thank like you for a telling slurpee? me that. no like cholado 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 yeah <laughs> okay and they say they try um mango iche mango iche that's no. like green no. green mango oh yeah, yeah. No, right. i have not you have not. I don't, I don't know if I have or not it's like crunchy mango isn't it yeah yeah so as how how should they eat it um, I'm not, I'm not the right person to do, to say <laughs> that because, so, so, so Mari, Mari, I'm yeah, because right I don't like mango wiche with salt, but, uh, you know, with salt is, is the way. With salt, how, how do you condensed do? milk, also there's people that put like paprika on it or pepper, things like that. But I like it just with lemon and condensed milk. Yeah. And also salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're into sour and salty things. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. more like uh, salt yeah. people, but you know, home cooking and something like that. So, uh, yeah, here on the comments, I just read like uh, roasted kui. So, yeah. Kui. 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 I, I have not tried that. Not yet. What is it? It's not. It's not a. Valle Caucano. It's not from, it's not from, from here, this no. region. But it's near from here. There is another department called Nariño. There, there is a little rat like this. It's like a big hamster. It's yeah. like, yeah, a, like a big hamster. It's like right. a guinea pig. Yeah. Okay. Like a guinea pig. That's exactly oh, what it is. Yeah. It's a guinea pig. Yeah, it oh, it's just pig. like a guinea pig. Like okay. a cooked yeah. guinea pig? Yeah, it's a, a yeah. roasted yeah. guinea pig. Oh, right. Like roasted chicken, but roasted Yeah, if, if, if the things move, yeah. you probably can eat it. So <laughs> keep that in mind here. Enough. I didn't know that it was something that they eat here, but I know that they eat it in Ecuador. So. Yeah. It's from the south. Yeah, yeah it is in the border south. with Ecuador. Actually, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Pretty that makes common. sense. Honestly, I haven't tried it. <laughs> you <laughs> need to. Me, me, a Colombian, I haven't tried it. I'm a little like, 
I don't know. I I, I think it's still cute to die. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a pity because they, you know, when they serve it, they, if they, the animal's like there. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's like there. Sorry. You can see his face. So it's like sad. I would oh. probably still eat so, it. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll probably start lie. crying. You know? <laughs> People are saying tamal. Have tamal. you guys tried wow. tamal? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have not. I don't think I have. No. Tamal. You haven't tried tamale? No. How would you describe a tamale? Do oh, you wait, tamale. tamale. Oh, yes. Wait, okay. yeah. tamale, yes. Ah, okay. okay, yeah, that's what it is. I love oh, tamale. I take it back. Of course, yeah. yes. Oof, maneja, paisa. <laughs> Me encanta. Do you know there's two types, right? The one from the Valle and the one that is from Tolima. Yeah. And they are different because the one from Tolima, it's more like with rice more than meat. It's like a lechona, but like like it's a tamale. Okay. Yeah. And then there's like the one that is from here, from the from the valle, and it's meat one, you know. Yeah. I prefer the tolima one. I think in in the United States we 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 also eat tamale, but I think That's there's just from different. from different like places, like just yeah. so many different places that has tamale. So it's like I don't know which one we have tried, but mm -hmm. we've is tried it. it. <laughs> tamale is a kind of food that exists everywhere in Central and South America, just that they have their own version. That's mm -hmm. true. Right, right, right. I have a challenge for Jordan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Describe the ingredients in the bandeja paisa, but in Spanish. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is brutal. See. And you guys in the audience are gonna write the ingredients for the bandeja paisa, but in English. Uh, I, um, chicharrón, um, mm -hmm. frioles, y arroz, sí, arroz, y qué más, um, plátano, creo que, um, um, oof, I think. You, you are missing the core. Um, uh, the 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 rounded black oh, white one the best part yeah uh, you literally uh, had it like a couple hours ago no it's not rice no. it's no. The, rice but it's arle arle pa <laughs> oh arepa? no he was saying yeah. egg yeah. I mean yeah. you know part? bandeja paisa without arepa is not a bandeja paisa so ah. Ah. well bandeja paisa is a, is 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 without Many things, not on the hot pizza, but, yeah, but okay. But I was thinking of something, you were thinking of something. <laughs> so I think we were saying arepa, mm -hmm. arepa. huevo, we si, huevo, that's the way, and arroz, arroz, arroz. Sure. Uh, frijoles. They said frijoles. Have you seen that, 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 that everything is with rice here? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lot of rice. Do you get very sleepy after you have lunch? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that didn't happen to you before as much? Mm, not as much as here. Because mm -hmm. I feel like for the amount of money, the portions are very large here. But in the United States, the portions are like smaller for the price that you pay. Okay. Well, it depends where you go. Because in, yeah, Colombian, in Colombian go. restaurants in the United States, the portions are huge. Enormous. Right. They're yeah. so big. They're like twice the size of a board of zero. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Especially at chain restaurants. Like, you are really getting a mountain of, of food to eat. Um, definitely getting leftovers. <laughs> yeah. Which, I do that a lot in college. Like, sometimes I'll intentionally go out to a restaurant that I know has big portions because then I get second dinner. So then it's like two, paying for two <laughs> meals um, instead of just one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. That's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done it, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, take a little break from our conversation. Cristina Peñafort, the director of the International Relations Office, talked to Isabella and to Mariana and she explained all the different options of exchange programs that exist at Universidad Autónoma de Occidente. So if you were thinking, okay, I would love to, but I don't know where to start, I don't know where to go, here is the information that you needed so that you can start taking the first step. Let's listen to the video from Cristina Peñafort, Gustavo played the video, and take some notes because we're going to be asking you some questions afterwards. the Director of Internationalization at Universidad Autónoma de Occidente. Hello. And we're going to be talking about the exchange programs and also the programs about internationalization. Hi guys, we are here with Cristina Peñafort, the Director of International 
conversation at the Universidad Autónoma de Occidente. Hello. And we're going to be talking about the exchange programs and also the programs about internet conversation. One of the things that I would like to emphasize is that exchange programs can be done um, like, like that, face to face, after they, are, they complete the first year here in the university. Uh, so that's one of the requirements. Another requirement is to have an average of 3.5 and also to have the support of the director of the program who orients the selection of the subject or, or this other subject that are the ones that the students are going to study in the other university. So, and something important also is that these students need to behave very well during their university life because they are going to be representatives of UAO, of Cali, of Colombia, and we need people that have not had any disciplinary issues here in the university. So behave well if you want to travel. The students go to another country where people speak different from Spanish. They need to learn the language or at least have a B1 level before traveling there. We want to go to the common European family. But some of the universities, yeah, they require a TOEFL score or an IELTS score um, or a Portuguese exam. It, it depends very much on the university, but it is important to have the certification in here. There you go. Thank you so much, Cristina, for that information. So if you are a WOW student and you want to find out more or start registering or start your process with an exchange program, go to the uh, International Relations Office, talk to the girls over there, and they're going to be more than welcome and more than happy to give you all the different options so that you can start your exchange program process. Now, you guys are here because you came in an exchange program. Um, could you tell us a little bit of what is the name of the, of the agency? How does that work? How did you guys register? Once you registered, when did you get on board in the, in the plane? How did that happen? Who wants to say it? Who wants to tell us? Um, well, I think for, I don't know if it's the same for every school, but Isabella and I go to the same school. And for us, it's like our school, basically puts it all on one website, all the programs, whether they're provider programs or they're a campus, like our school's campus on an, in another country. Um, so from there, you just kind of look at which one you want to go to. You read into the programs, you do all that, and then you like kind of click through. And then it depends on the program. For this one, we had to apply through the CET website, which is like the provider program that we're in. And um, we wrote like a couple of prompts, um, like essays or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we just sent our application. Some people had to get figured out their like visas or, mm -hmm. or how they were gonna be staying in this country for so long. And then like, yeah, then you get accepted or, and then yeah, the whole process begins and then yeah, you have some things that you get ready, like yeah. roommate selection, um, just all the logistics, and then you get on the plane, and now we're here. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Pretty nice. Yeah. So, guys, well, that's... Colombia and the USA have different cultures, mm -hmm. languages, and so many different things, um, especially traditions, that could lead to cultural shock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's just start talking about food. We already did talk about food, but have you gotten a stomachache from anything that you have eaten, from drinking the water? From drinking the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from drinking the water. It was actually the worst pain I felt since I got here. It was really, <laughs> really bad. 
I I still haven't drinking the tap water because I'm so scared to get pain like that again. But some people got used to it, like Jordan. It was yeah. a drinking the water from Cali or from another city? From Cali. From Cali. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And we Calenos drink tap water every single day, <laughs> and we're okay. So mm -hmm. all right. Um, Defenses. What what about <laughs> what about the cultural shock related to food? Is there something that shocked you that they maybe the you were talking about Persians mm -hmm. or something that you said definitely I don't want to try that. What has been some of the cultural shock experiences related to food? Um, well, for me, I feel like a really big difference is that in the U.S., we tend to, especially college students, tend to have like very grab and go meals. So, like, you make breakfast, you eat it immediately. You get lunch, eat it immediately. It's also usually like one thing, like a sandwich or something. When we came here, the cafeteria, wow, has like a whole plate for you and like a couple different, like, rice and chicken and a little salad and um like a platano and just like a lovely little dish and so i was like this is so cute and people are like sitting eating with their friends like you have the time in your day to really enjoy your meal and at least for me in the u.s not really like that like i am eating to survive because i have like 10 minutes between classes or something um and so that's been yeah a good change i'd say lemons um, lemons. Yeah. <laughs> for me, lemons. I would say the amount of rice that is consumed with the food that I eat. Um, you know, in the U.S., I, I, I don't know. Depending on <laughs> what day it is, I'll eat different things. But here, it's like, I think I eat rice, like, every day. Um, which before, I didn't really do. Or just just even ordering the food was just like a cultural shock for me. Well, because I had to order it in Spanish now. <laughs> uh, which I have gotten better at. Um, but yeah, just surviving. Exactly. <laughs> like the main, the principal, um, and then, you know, the size and things like that. So that was a, a little bit of a culture shock. But too many options, right? Honestly, sometimes I'm just like, oh, what do I want? <laughs> just give me one option, please. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want, Jordan? That's a great question, Isabella. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Sebas, what else related to cultural shock? Can we ask them? Can we ask them? Okay. Um, about food again or? No, different. Different. Okay. Mm, let's talk about... Uh, let me check here. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's going to be awful. But what about transportation? Okay, for me, it was actually so... Like, I'm, I feel stuck. I feel... Suck. I I'm from New York, so the, there's a really easily accessible like train. There's train and bus, and it's just so easy to get anywhere. And I, I have absolutely no idea how the mule works. And then I'm also I also go to school in DC, which yeah. also has a metro system, yeah, and a bus system, and it's so easy. So you have more options in here. You have limited options of transportation. Yeah, that's more what limited it feels than like. when you're used to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, I know like here isn't the meal like the primary. Yeah, like isn't it like um, like Cali, one of the cities that has like one of those like public transportation systems, or are there other big cities here that Bogota also and Medellin? Yeah, actually, I think Medellin is the one with most options. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Medellin is a good place to go to. Yeah. I'm gone. <laughs> and what about Yeish? Um, probably, or I don't want to say super similar to Jillian. Where I go to school and where I live, we don't have a metro system, and the public transportation system isn't really good. But I, at home, I'm used to driving, and like here, I would not feel safe to drive. <laughs> um, but I think I want to try to take the meal more, but it, I don't really like that I have to like rely on Uber, but I feel like the area is way more walkable than any place at home or like where I've gone to school. So it's really nice that like if I need something, then I can just walk a couple of blocks and get something. Okay. Yeah. And we want to ask the audience to propose some questions regarding cultural shock for our guest. We already talked about transportation, already about food. So what other questions would you like to ask? And in a matter of fact, we have a question from... Mm -mm 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 -mm. I just saw it. it. 
This is Juan David Mosquera. He says, I want to ask them about their experience with partying in the city. <laughs> How is this different to what you're used to? Go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan is a party animal. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, take, take the lead. Um, well, I'll say that I like partying here in Cali. Um, I don't know, just the music, the ambiance. Um, you know, people go here, they party with groups. Um, so, yeah, and people, I feel like here people actually dance than in the United States. That's a, a big difference. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I like to party, uh, as they know. So, if you have any parties, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mari, um, what question could we ask them about maybe the weather? Yeah. How, how have you felt the weather? The weather is hot, and the thing is, too, it's hot, and there's so many bugs, like... <laughs> <laughs> Especially here, uh, wow, well, yeah. Yes, so yeah. the thing is, yeah. it's hot, so I'm like, okay, like, let me wear shorts, but you wear shorts, and you just get eaten alive by mosquitoes, <laughs> and I see people wearing long pants, long yeah. shirts, and I'm so confused, because I sweat so much. <laughs> also, daddy <laughs> brains. And your whole outfit. Exactly. <laughs> Just gone. Right. Okay. Um, People yeah. are kinder here. Yeah, they're super duper nice. How, I mean, especially you guys from New York. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the cultural shock between a New Yorker and a Caleño in matters of politeness? So much. Okay. <laughs> well, I think also people are just kinder. They're more... It's like more community based, I guess. Like everybody is like, I don't know, just really like loving and stuff. And like sometimes it's like I like have my own bubble. Like please don't pop my bubble, my personal space bubble. But you know, like it's just like it's just <laughs> he just did. Everybody is more. Everybody is more like yeah, just like friendly, here. like more like loving, like more like that. And in New York, it's really like you mind your own business, basically. Mm. Um, and the pace of life here is super slow, like super relaxing. In New York, everything's like go, go, go. So everybody, nobody has time for all of that. I yeah. feel that Cali is a fast-paced city. So imagine if she feels too slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. wait till you come to yeah. the United States. I live here, yeah. but I feel this city is so fast. And yeah. I, I went to, to the town and that's so calm. I, I love that calm. But here yeah. I feel the city like like a rush. Really? Yeah. Oh, totally. So if no. we go to New York, we're going to be like... Yeah. yeah. You're going to be <laughs> overwhelmed. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you should still go. It's mm -hmm. cool. Okay, we have a question from Sofia Cruz, and she said, could you ask them, what has been the biggest cultural shock you have had in Cali in general? Mm. Ooh, a big one, and this happened on the first day, is that you can't flush toilet paper down, oh. <laughs> down the toilet. The toilet got clogged? Yeah, but I didn't do it, somebody. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> right oh, wait. Jordan and I were roommates our first, but <laughs> I wasn't the one that clogged it. We have two other people. Yeah, oh. it was two other people, and we're not going to name names, but yeah. Um, wait, isn't there we're only not gonna like ask you what you did. two people per restroom in yeah. the apartments, though? I mean, it's, it's yeah, just... But it's like we like they could still use it though oh cause like, like we're in the my apartment in the only like half uses the outside and then the other half uses their bathroom inside the room yeah but in this case like that person just used our bathroom oh yeah but it was in, it's <laughs> the one in the hallway it doesn't matter <laughs> okay so right learning not to throw paper in the toilets that yeah. was one but, but it depends on the toilet okay there are biggest <laughs> like uh Newer, newer sewers. Yeah. Really? So yeah. you can throw it and yeah, the it. toilet paper just uh, disappear there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes it's depend of the toilet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but better not to risk it. Yeah, mm -hmm. better yeah. not to risk it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, what other cultural shock in general? Um kind of similar to what Jillian was saying about community. Like even though I don't live in New York City, like a lot of people in my neighborhood, when they like walk past each other, they don't really say hi unless you like have like a personal relationship with them. But like saying hi to strangers is kind of like customary. Mm -hmm. But like at home, I'm used to just like walking with my headphones and walking with my head down and just being like, whatever. Just ignoring everyone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here you, you will be, I mean, you will look rude if you just yeah. ignore the other person getting into an elevator yeah. or something like that yes. you, good morning good morning good morning all exactly. the time all yeah the time. 
Okay, and another cultural shock? Um, I think the biggest one for me has been like catcalling. That cat calling? What do you oh, mean? Oh, that's terrible. Cat calling yeah. is, is when, so if we're women, like a man yeah. on the street or something will be like, oh, you're so pretty, or, you know, like nice ass. So, I don't know. Here we come, oh. like, beat up. <laughs> right, 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 right. Beat up, you know, on the street by okay. strangers, men that just. So in the US, it's yeah. seen as really rude. It's like a form of harassment. Um, and so it's really negatively looked upon. Um, but it still happens. But in Colombia, it's not necessarily like a form of harassment. Sometimes it's just like a compliment. Right. Sometimes it's just a compliment from a stranger. Um, and so that took me a while to get used to, to respond to is like, oh, th this is just like something that they're saying. Like they're not harassing me. No, no. Like I don't need to like worry about anything. It's just like what it is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. In the United States, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. And another, another experience, Julian? Um, I think like, no, what all of these said, I think the biggest culture shock was what we already mentioned, the transportation and the pace of life. Um, because I think those are really like, two big things that are part of my living in the United States because I'm, I live in two big cities. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit of a culture shock and maybe like, no, that's it. Yeah. We have a <laughs> few interesting questions from our audience. Um, Alejandro Arias asks, what is the hardest word for you to pronounce in Spanish? I have one. I have a challenge. Parangaricutirimicuaro. Ah! <laughs> Whatever he just said is my biggest challenge. Yeah. <laughs> try it, try it. Para, para it's like super califragilistic as Pirelliadocious in Spanish. Super califragilistic as Yeah, I can't even say I, it. I love that one. Right. Mary Poppins, right? I yeah. don't know. Okay, it, what's yes. the word can you, you say the word again? again? Oh, I, let's go for an easier one, actually. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm thinking right now, yeah, like uh, chunchullo. Chunchullo. Yeah, that's a good one, but yeah. it's easy. It's an easy one, and it's a dish too. Mm -hmm. mm. What about this one? Carro. 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 Oh. Carro. Because I can't yeah. roll my no, R, exactly. my tongue enough. Exactly. Yeah. The R's are difficult, the right? Carro. Try it. No. Oh, but you did pretty oh, good. Oh, oh. Okay. Um, did Kali meet your expectations? Yes. Yes, it exceeded my expectations. Exceeded. Mm -hmm. Chilean is quiet. <laughs> no, I think it's just literally because it's just different here. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just super different. So it was getting, it's a, it, it's really beautiful. It just took me some time to take, uh, to adjust to because mm -hmm. of what I was saying earlier. Like, everything's so slow. Yeah. And I just feel mm -hmm. like. You're impatient? Something, yes. Mm -hmm. You like can't do too much in a day. And, like, I need to do something at all times. And <laughs> I, like, can't. <laughs> right. I have to, like, slow down a little bit. But I, I think that that's, like, a good thing in itself um, yeah. and, uh, of the overall experience. Um, and the towns, as you were saying earlier, I've been to some towns outside of Cali, and they're gorgeous. So, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a good... Uh, uh, you know, advanced, like, uh, take your time, breathe, feel yeah. what you feel. And yeah, exactly. Just uh, relax, chill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> chill. <laughs> to chill out a little yeah, bit. You yeah, have, you have the time here, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. nice. Okay, guys, this has been a blast. We have so much running, so much to talk about. But unfortunately, our time is up, again. and it's time for us to go again. Should we do part three? <laughs> Yeah, um, sure. I mean, yeah. Sure. It would be cool. <laughs> yeah. We have to do part three, but somewhere else. Okay. Mm, okay. Like go out to a salsa dancing class. <laughs> or Let's go, like that. buddy. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> he's going to teach us. Are you up to? I'm have up you to guys drunk at Perdiente? Of course you have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> which alcohol I've tried, but I think I've tried one. It was really spicy. I tried aguardiente, but I don't know. I feel like it's not that strong for me. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh my god! You have to try biche. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's aguardiente with the herbs. With the herbs, and it's from it's from the Pacific. It's, it has a different okay. like recipe, but I it's think stronger. I had it in San Cipriano. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should because it's from there. Okay. Okay, okay everyone. <laughs> 
first of all, remember to complete the attendance form. We're going to be showing you the QR code for you to scan it, or in the description of the program, you should have the link to complete the attendance form so that you can get those extra points from your teachers. Second, remember to follow us on Wow Speaks English uh, on Instagram and Facebook as Wow Speaks English. And there, maybe you can send some messages for our guests. We will be transmitting those messages to them. And you can maybe you have some fans who want to meet you or something or get your autograph or you're taking your picture taken. Anytime. Follow us on Instagram. Love the fans. No. There That's why we do go. it. <laughs> and number three is stay tuned next Thursday at uh, four o'clock because we're going to be talking about what, Mari? Artificial intelligence. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> the trendy topic AI. right now. Yeah, actually, it's yeah. very important right now. Mm -hmm. You know, chat GBD. My friend. I, I don't want to do my homework, so I go to chat GBD. And but is no the same? <laughs> I'm engineering major. Oh, That's so scary. Uh, what have you used it for? You know, Asher Don't say that. <laughs> 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 For not platform. feeling lonely. <laughs> like, hi, what you doing? Yeah. Ah. Actually, you can. I used the uh, ChatGPT once to uh, get a a recipe. Right. Okay. 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 I, I, I knew uh, a boy that used it to find new music. He was like, eh, "Here are my top five songs of the week. Can you recommend me songs like this?" Oh. And Yeah, yeah, did. That's oh, so you can useful. use it to find your music too. So oh, that's sorry. like the cool side. Now let's talk about the scary side. Is artificial intelligence going to conquer the world and <laughs> uh, destroy the human race? <laughs> no. I don't think so. I yes don't or think no? So that, yes or but no? Maybe create misinformation. Okay. Mm. So okay. we're going to be expanding information regarding artificial intelligence next Thursday. So don't miss it. Four o'clock on Thursday. Uh, on YouTube as Universidad Autónoma de Occidente. So let me ask you a question. Wow speaks English. Do, Do you? you speak English? <laughs> Bye, everyone. It's Thailand, it's Bye. a <laughs>